Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and today we'll be looking at the preferences and settings in Dark Table. The preferences menu can be accessed by clicking on this little cog button on the top right corner. Let's start at the top, the general settings, you've got the interface language, nothing is selected, it's the, uh, the uh, it will use the default language of your operating system, but you have a set of translations that you can select. Note that some of these would may require you to restart Darktable for them to take effect. Next, you have the theme. Let's choose another one just for fun. This takes effect immediately so you can test it in real time. I'll go back to the default. Next we have the GUI thumbs and previews DPI scaling factor. The default is minus one which means that it will just take the system settings and this controls the th size of the thumbnails. You don't have to mess up mess with that one if everything looks and works okay but if you have a high uh, a resolution screen the thumbnails might be too small so you will need to increase this one but if dark table becomes too slow then you w might want to decrease the size to fix that. Notice as well that you get help if you hover over any settings. The next setting is the same, but for the controls and the text in your GUI. So the previous one was for the thumbnails and the previews, and this one is just for the other um, uh, GUI elements. And if you're comfortable with CSS and you want to muck about with the a design of the GUI, then you can enable the CSS tweaks and write your own uh, below. These are saved and applied on every single time you enter Darktable. Next we have the import settings. The first one allows you to ignore JPEG images in film rolls. Um, this is useful if you take uh, JPEG and RAW images with the same names uh, and the uh, in your camera, it doesn't make any sense to actually import two images of the same photo, one in RAW and one in JPEG. The next one is the default uh, to, to do recursive directory traversals when importing film roll. Um, if you don't select this one, you can always select it individually when importing uh, a folder. But if you always want to do that, then you can set it up here. Next, we have uh, a few copyright settings that can be added to the EXIF of the image while, uh, when importing it. Um, creator, publisher, rights, uh, and then all, the, all um, freehand tags that you can add here. You can do that in light table and in dark room as we've discussed previously, but if you want to apply the same tags to all of your photos, then you can add them here. And this is the star rating of the default star, rate, star rating when you import in images. The default is one. If you, for any reason, you, um, you find it useful to import using another rating, suppose you want to use two as your default to, to, um, and then use one for uh, photos to be deleted, then you can do that here. As for the bottom, section here called session options. If you remember from the light table uh, video, uh, we have the possibility of importing uh, photos directly from a camera or an external device. For more information you can refer to that video. This section concerns the naming convention when you when you use that. So the directory name and the subdirectory patterns and then you could keep the original file name that you're importing, uh, that is the file name that uh, your device has given in, uh, automatically, so the camera filing convention, or you can rename the files 
with the specific pattern that you set up here. Next, we have the light table options. First option, the top checkbox allows you to create color managed cache thumbnails. So the JPEGs that are created by um, a light table for those thumbnails that you can see behind are color managed. This is a little bit slower, but if you don't if you don't uh, check this box, you will the thumbnails will not be color managed and their colors might be different from reality. Um, I'd rather have it on to have a more or less close to truth colors in the thumbnails. Your other option is to actually use raw files and not JPEGs at all. So there will be no uh, JPEGs cached, but half size row. This is much slower, but it gives you the best uh, preview if you want the closer to reality preview. Afterwards, you have the number of folders to show on the list. The default is one, and then if you add them, you'll have more starting from the right. And then you, how to sort the uh, film rolls. The default is by ID, but you can have it by folder. And after that, you have the sort uh, order, which is, if you select it, it's from the recent to older. So you get the recently imported or added images on the top and going backwards. If you don't select that, it will be the other way around. And after, afterwards, you have the size of the high uh, quality thumb thumbnails and you can change that. I find that 720 is fast enough and good enough to see but you might want to change that uh, depending on your, on your screen and the speed of your computer or the processing power. The next three are related to the extended overlays or the data that you can have on your um, thumbnails. This We've discussed this in the light table video. You can again refer to that if you want more information. But you could set up what to see on the thumbnail based on the size of the thumbnail. And here you have the del uh, delimiters. That means what is considered a small and what is considered a medium size or a normal size thumbnail and based on those the defaults will be set on your uh, on your thumbnails under that you have a list of what um, you can display in the extended overlay text and that is free text you can add whatever you want but uh, of course you have to know what the name of the variables and that list can be found on dark uh, dark rooms uh, website and the next one is exactly the same, but it's not for the overlays, but the tooltip. And the tooltip is the information that is displayed when you hover over a thumbnail. Next, the checkbox that allows you to use single click instead of double click in the collect panel. This is handy if you want to select multiple folders or uh, to, to work on them or film rolls. Afterwards, you, get, you have a checkbox to overlay text sidecar over zoomed images these are um, yeah uh, if you if you had a si text sidecar other than the one created by uh, dark table with imported at the time of the um, uh, at the time of the creation or of the import of the image then this text sidecar will be displayed on the image when you when you zoom in if you select that uh, if, you, if you want more information about Sidecar, please refer to the previous uh, videos. Then you have a checkbox to allow you to expand only one light table module at a time. Uh, this is the default behavior for light uh, for us uh, dark room, if you remember. And then if you, if you select it, only one will be uh, you'll be able to expand only one at a time. So if you click on an on another one, the the previously opened one will be closed and you will you need to use the shift key in, com in combination with your mouse button to open more than one at the same time exactly like in darkroom scroll to light table modules when expanded collapsed if you select this one then if you uh, 
suppose you have multiple ones open and you uh, um, select the bottom one which is hidden then dark, to, uh, dark table will uh, attempt to scroll to that one so that you can see all of its uh, settings otherwise you have to do that manually then you, the last uh, not the, the penultimate one is uh, rating an image once uh, one star twice will not zero out the rating the default setting is that if if a image is rated one star and you select one star again, then the image will have zero stars. If you don't want that behavior and you don't want any images with zero star, then you will uh, you can select this one and the minimum default would be uh, well, the minimum at all would be one star. And the last one is to see scroll bars in the central view. Next, we have to darkroom preferences screen. The first two settings are related to your brush. It works the same as uh, any other editing or uh, photo editing software if you're familiar with these. The first one is the pressure for brush masks. The default is off, that is pressure affects nothing and you could select what you want uh, the brush, um, the pen pressure to affect, so between hardness, opacity, or brush size. And next, you have the smoothing of brush strokes. Uh, you've got low, medium, and high. Low is faster, but it's less control. Next, you can select what to show in the individual colors channel if you're selecting the parametric masks. The default is false color. You can set it up as well to grayscale. Afterwards, you've got the pat pattern for the image info line, which is displayed in dark room. At the bottom, it follows the same conventions as what we saw for the light table settings. You can find all of the available um, attributes on the dark, uh, dark table website. Then you have the position of the image info line, the default is bottom, but you can change that as you want. Then you get to see what to show in the search module text entry. In the dark uh, dark room modules, to add new modules, you can search for them, and you can either search text or show groups or show both. The default is show both. By the way, you can double click on any setting to reset it to default. You have to double click on the text to reset it. Next, we have uh, just like in we just saw in Light Table, the expand a single dark room module at a time. It is selected by default here, as opposed to Light Table, which is disabled by default, but you can disable it if you want. Then you have a, a option to expand the module when it's activated and collapse it when it's disabled. Uh, in dark room, if you select, if you uh, click on the power button in uh, modules title bar to enable it or disable it, by default this does not expand it or collapse it. But if you'd like that to be the, that behavior, then you can enable it here, and then you can just like we discussed in uh, light table settings, you can scroll to a dark room module when expanded, collapsed. This means that it will scroll the uh, the panel. To actually show you the f as much de as much detail as possible of the uh, module that you just enabled. Next, we have the size of the border of around the image in darkroom. You can set it to zero to disable border completely, and then you can enable scroll bars in the central view. And you can you have settings for the demosaic and well, for zoomed out. Uh, photos in darkroom. You've got different settings, not going to go into them, but it shows exactly what what there is. Bilinear is the fastest, so you get, you, if you have no uh, limited resources, then you'd use that, but you might see some artifacts in the uh, in the image while uh, work in, in zoomed out mode. The default is uh, at most PPG, which is reasonable. I didn't, I've never seen any problems with it, but you can have the full as well, full de de mosaic, but that can become quite slow. And then you can reduce the resolution of the preview image. The default is original, but you can limit, you can uh, 
reduce that if you have resources issues as well. We're going to stop here for now and we'll continue with the preferences in the next video. I hope that you found this entertaining and useful. And if you have any corrections or suggestions, please leave a comment below. See you next time.